All right, so let's show how to do Pearson's correlations and how we can do both the R value and the P value and have it so we can just drag it across so we can do lots and lots of correlations really, really quickly for when we need to do that. So whether it's plan correlations or you're doing some sort of exploratory look at the data, um, this is a nice way of doing it. All right, so let's do the percent change in diameter um, as our target um, variable that we're gonna compare everything else to. Uh, so up here is our data. So here's our percent change in diameter data for all of our subjects. And so let's scroll down to where we want this to live. So down here, we're, I have all my between statistics. So let's just type um, Pearson's uh, correlation R value. All right, so that's what we're calculating first is the R value for the Pearson correlation. And let's go back over here to the column that had our percent change in diameter data. So this, here it is right here. So scrolling back down though. Um, I'm gonna click, click where I want the, the R value to show up. Let's go up and click our, our form in the bar and start typing equals. And now I'm gonna start typing the word Pearson's or the name Pearson's, P-E-A-R, there it is, uh, Pearson right here. So double click that. And it's asking me for a ray one and a ray two. All right, so what I would need to do is come up here and highlight the percent change in diameter data, all of it, because I wanna compare it to everything else. And I'm gonna click back up here and put a comma. And now I need to highlight the data I want to compare it to. But I'm going to do something else right now just to make it um, drag properly when I drag it across my data. I'm going to compare the percent change in diameter to itself. So this should give us a perfect correlation because we're comparing it, it to itself. So it should be a correlation of one. Um, so for my array two, I'm going to highlight the same data. And I'm going to hit enter, which will add the parentheses. So again, we got a Pearson correlation of coefficient of one because we're comparing the same data to itself. So we would expect that. Um, and when we go to copy this across though, we want one of the one of these arrays to stay with the percent change in diameter and the other one to change to whichever column we are copying the formula to. So I'm gonna go back up here to where this formula is. And so I'll do it for this first this first array. So go before F2 and put a money sign and go before F23 and put a money sign and hit enter again. All right, didn't change anything. We're still comparing the, the percent change diameter column to itself. But now when we drag it across to another variable, so I just click that little box in the bottom and dragged it across to the left there. All right, so now let's click where the this new formula that we dragged is, and let's go up and click the formula bar so it highlights our data. Now we're comparison, comparing that same percent change in diameter column to the column that we have dragged the formula into. So we're now comparing the, uh, the peak diameter to percent change diameter columns, which is what I want to do. I want to be able to drag this across and compare it to all of the um, all of the other variables. So let's hit enter, get out of that. And let's go back, let's click that original column again, go to that little box in the bottom right hand corner, and let's just drag it across all of our data, all of our data columns. And um, let's come back to, let's go to say the area under the curve, the shear rates. Um, that's that's this data right here. And if I go to where that Pearson correlation R value is in that column, click that. Let's click on the form of the bar again so we can see what it's doing. It's comparing the area under the curve to that original percent change in diameter. So the reason why I'm able to drag the formula across is because I put those those dollar symbols before the F2 and the F23. Um, it kept this highlighted as I'm dragging the formula across. So you can see, I'll go to another one and it is now in this column, but this column is still, the percent change in diameter column is still highlighted, which is what I wanted. All right, so this gives us our R value across this row. We also need our Pearson correlation P value so we can determine if it's statistically significant or not. So Pearson correlations, I'm just gonna let it 
autofill that, change that R to P. So let's calculate the P value for each of these. Um, so I'm going to go to my first set of data. So I'm going to go to the peak diameter column here, and I'm going to click right there. Now I've put a um, the formula that I'm about to paste into this, I've put a, a version of it in the description below this video. So go and copy that and you can paste it in and do this with me. So I have it where I want my p-value to show up. I'm going to click the formula bar. I'm going to do control V to paste it in. And we have this that will come up. If you copy it out of the description, you'll have the same thing. So going through this, there are data in brackets, or there are words in brackets that we need to remove and replace with whatever that word is. So this first one says R value, and that's in brackets. So let's get rid of the brackets and where it says R value. So I'm just going to highlight it, hit backspace to delete it out. And I'm going to click where the R value is for this column, which is what it asked for. So I'm going to click that. Go to the next one. It says sample size, so the end size. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to hit delete. And so in this spreadsheet, I have the end size for the full data set all the way up here. So right here, n equals. So that's just the number of um, participants data you have. It's a sample size. So there's 21 participants data. So if you were to come up here and count, it's 21 participants. So um, that's what it wanted there. Go to this here. Again, it wants the R value. So get rid of the R value words and the brackets around the words and click R value again. And it wants that uh, once again right here. Do the same. Click the R. And one more time, it wants the end size again. And go back up here after deleting that and click the end size and hit enter. So the p-value here is 0.21. So this is above the 0.05 threshold, so this is not a statistically significant correlation. So basically it means there's no correlation between the two variables being uh, compared here, which were the peak diameter and the percent change in diameter. Let's click, uh, make sure you're clicked on the cell, go to the little box in the bottom right corner, get your plus cursor and let's drag this across so we have it with all of our, 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 our values. This was how to do um, Pearson's correlations in Excel using formulas rather than going through the clunky statistical packages that Excel has built in. In the next video in this series, I'm going to show you how to use conditional formatting to make it really easy to find where there are statistically significant um, comparisons happening so you don't have to go through and actually read each one of these. So we're going to make it even easier and we're going to turn them a certain color so that we can see if it's statistically significant. So make sure to watch that video.